Body. He says that with like <laughs> bitterness. Sounds How you going, boys? Good. <laughs> Good. Shrimp on the barbie. What better way than to run out of land and run from one side of the country to the other? Aussies love their mullets. Hello, everyone. This is Team Talk, episode three. We're here in Melbourne. Um, we are behind us is the pop-up store. Um, we're going to make this pretty quick and brief because <laughs> we've got some fans waiting for us behind. I actually have quite a few fans, to be fair. We do have a few friends. And we have replaced Logan with my lovely trainer, performance coach, is how he likes to be termed, Patrick Hardy. He says that with, like, bitterness. Because <laughs> no, the no. First, first three <laughs> years, he used to call me his masseuse. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and he used to drive me insane. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, yeah, basically, we're just going to have a little bit of a chat. Um, obviously, we are in Australia. I have touched on my accent since last time, which I think... Uh, People weren't that impressed by. I have got better. We yeah. did. We did, did some we, practice this morning. We were in the gym this morning, and um, we were with Oscar and uh, Oscar's trainer, Kim, um, who, by the way, is one of the worst paddle players. We said Oscar was bad, but Kim yeah, is slightly Kim's worse. worse. Yeah. Yeah. He is. I mean, not, I wouldn't even say slightly. I would say <laughs> significantly worse. And I did show them my accent. They were pretty impressed. It kind of took you a couple of seconds yeah, to yeah. get into it. I had to get into the rhythm. I had to really. Yeah. Um, you're a method. Harness, you're the, a method actor. <laughs> Exactly. I just vibe off, off Oscar and, and, yeah, and Kim and, and then I got it. Um, but anyway, we're going to bring on our first guest. I think um, just in general, Patrick, you must be a better versed in this. So I'm going to let you take over the yeah. <laughs> He's chucking that one to me already. <laughs> yeah. Are we, we're skipping the recap of Saudi. Saudi. Oh, do we want to talk about Saudi? Saudi's the vibe. Um, Saudi was the vibe. <laughs> Saudi was the vibe. There's it, never a truer word said. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't how we wanted it to go. Um, it, it, but I mean, in terms of execution, from it was you, a, yeah, team, yes, yeah, yeah. We, we did a good job. I think we did realistically the best job we could have done. Yeah. I don't think there was much more else in it. I think um, some 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 sneaky tactics from some other teams, but otherwise, they will nothing go unmentioned. To be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> we would have done the same a hundred times <laughs> yeah. over. I would have done the same. So, uh, so no, no, no love lost. Yeah. So um, watch out, Kev. So watch out, Kev. Okay. Let's introduce our guest. Well, this is our first true guest on the show. Um, that's no, that, that, non, that, that's, no caveat that way. Like non-team member. Non-team member. Yeah, yeah. Non-team member. Um, so Ned, please come on. Here he is. A round of applause. <laughs> How's it going? So we have an Australian Aussie legend. I mean, get these on right. We, how, does yeah. it, how does the sound? sound hey, down, boys. Good. <laughs> Good. No, that's an accident. There no, we go. We'll that's how it's done. Lean into it. <laughs> how are you, boys? Very good. What's your um, when someone tries to do an Aussie accent? Yep. What's your reaction? Do you get offended? Um, no, I don't get offended at all. I kind of, okay. I kind of like it. I um, <laughs> I think well, it does sound. Yeah, a I haven't bit, heard mine yet. Yeah, go on. I'm ready. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not gonna do it. I think it's a um. It's endearing. If someone has a crack at it, it's nice. It's good. Yeah. But what? usually it's like they're, they're more mimicking as opposed to uh, True. doing it properly. Yeah. You know? So like I'm Irish and I get like to be sure, to be sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no one says that, do they? Or do they? No, in Ireland, no, no one has ever no, said no, no. that. But every Aussie uh, ever. Uh, who or anybody, yeah. just worldwide. So <laughs> what, what is the Aussie phrase that people will chuck at uh, you? Um, oh, the Shrimp on the barbie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what is the other one? I just think, how are you going? And I yeah. think anywhere... Other than Australia in the world, you get people looking at you like, what the hell did you just say? Yeah. Um, but Aussies love it. Well, I think in Europe, certainly as I grew up, we had two shows that like were Aussie culture to us, Home and Away and Neighbours. Yeah. So Perfect. that was our, yeah, that was our playbook. Of, Can't say I ever watched either, but yeah. No, well, I think they're a little bit before your time. Yeah. Um, how are you boys going? You good? Very good. Yeah, thank good. you. Bit yeah. jet lag, you were saying before? Yeah. So we got here, um, I got here a day earlier than Patrick. Yeah. So we've been... Um, we get here as early as we can, just yep. for the jet lag. Um, so what we do is we do a couple of days on the, in the simulator, yep. getting ready for the circuit. Um, being a street track, it's a little bit harder to get up to speed because it's street track, so right. there's a bit more confidence to do with it. Gotcha. So up to speed as in you're not quite... You exactly. Can't get the with the walls there and everything, it just takes a little bit longer to, to be up optimal in terms of gotcha. driving. So a bit more time in the simulator for a street race. Yep. And... Um, so out here, the jet lag's tough. Yeah, it's right. Really tough. It's we're in the middle of nowhere, aren't we? We are. It's crazy. I, I would say Melbourne. I would live here 100%. Yeah, yeah. I, I would. I love 
I love Melbourne, but just You're middle of nowhere. Far away from everywhere. A lot of Thai people come to Melbourne. Like right. We have, I mean, we had Thai food last night, um, but it's actually How close it relative to other countries. So right. a lot of Thai people come to study here. And um, yeah, I know a lot of Thai people who've, who, who've lived in Melbourne or Sydney or wherever. So yeah. It's nice. Good food. And uh, hot. It is hot. Way hotter than last yeah, year. It's humid. Yeah. Yeah, was it, really humid. Was today. it hot when you ran through? <laughs> Across, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was. <laughs> yeah. Silly question. What, what yeah. a but, segue. But when, but when when did you, when, what, like time of year, mm -hmm. did you plan it to not be? No. So uh, the thing about this is there's no right or wrong time to do it. You just have to, and it's right. you know weather is going to happen. Uh, things yeah, like that are going to happen. You just have to deal with it when it comes. Amazing. It's always uh, future Ned's problem. You don't think about it. Whatever's <laughs> yeah. happening at the moment, I that's like what it. we deal with. I like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I hit a day of 44 degrees, which was oh, oh my degrees God. Celsius. I don't know what you guys yeah, do with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah, it was, it was basically from uh, midday onwards, I had the sun to my back for the whole rest of the oh afternoon. So God. I had blisters growing on the back of my arms and oh. back of my legs just popping as I was putting sunscreen on. So let, just for a bit of background for some of the people back uh, Europe who maybe not know the story. So you did two, so you did one, which was Perth to Sydney, so you ran across yep. Australia. Yep. yep. And the other one was 50 marathons in 50 days. Yeah, while working uh, wow. my eight hour day on the tools. <laughs> so, yeah, I did the wow. 50 marathons 50 days in 2020 yep, uh, yep. and then raised $100,000 for homelessness. That was it, yeah. And then uh, I went on to go bigger. What, what better way than to run out of land and run from one side <laughs> of the country to the other? Amazing. I lived in Australia for a couple of years, yep. a few years ago, and me and some mates drove across Australia. Long, big country. I, did you like run across the Nullarbor? Yeah, we did. Had oh to. It's the most direct route. Yeah, so, yeah. It's a long flight. Um, yeah. So, so how? What, Nullarbor is like a massive chunk of desert between Perth and Adelaide. It essentially okay, means okay. no trees in Wiradjuri. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the, it and literally means there's no trees. There's oh. one section of road, and it's 149 kilometers long. Yeah. And it's the <laughs> longest stretch of straight, straight road. road in the world. Really? There's like zero degree de de deviation, and there's wow. a sign at the front which yeah. is like <laughs> good luck, stretch. 90 miles straight, <laughs> literally. Yeah. So you ran all of that. Yeah, ran all That's that. Um, yeah, there was days out there much harder than others. Yeah, there was uh, 50k an hour headwinds. I know you probably deal oh, with yeah, winds yeah. a lot, um, but oh. yeah, it was one of those. <laughs> He's not running though. He's <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. car. I got a nice yeah. engine to plug <laughs> for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Aerodynamics. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, I was pretty aerodynamic by the time I hit the nullarbor because I, I lost 12 kilos on the run. Uh, so wow. Um, I yeah, it's a good way to lose weight if you want to do it. Like so many questions about that, but kind of when we're in the practicalities of it, like what is your calorie count for that day? Yeah, so I was so burning anywhere from, so if I was getting 100 kilometers done in a day, I would burn uh, upwards of 12,000 calories a day. So what, what is a meal? Give us, like yeah. what were you okay. eating? Like Here we go, ready? So bacon egg rolls times two in the morning. Yeah. Oats um, with a ton of brown sugar, yeah. berries, anything I can yeah. get on. The best food to eat is the one you can actually eat. Like you can think there's the you know there's nuts and there's all these things yeah. that are calorie dense and nutrients, but essentially the last thing you whatever want to you eat is something in. that is yes. worth eating. Um, so yeah, whatever you can get in, yeah. but also lack of resources out in the Nullarbor, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. like um, we're basically eating chicken schnitzels from the pub and steaks and <laughs> yeah, pies yeah, yeah, yeah. and ham and cheese croissants and yeah, anything I could get my hands on. Literally. But because I was only I was probably eating a consuming eight to nine thousand, I was still in a wow. uh, deficit of, of three thousand calories. So. Yeah, I just faded away like that. Any muscle I had was gone. Crazy. Man. Yeah. Crazy. What are you weighing in at? What do you have to be at? We are we're on some kind of strict regimen just because I'm quite tall for a racing driver. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. When we, with that height, you carry some weight. But I have to be about 73 kilos dry, right. more or less. Um, you start the winter training, we call it bulking, but just yeah. pretty much getting to a normal gotcha. weight. Yeah. And then as the, as the year goes on, we just... Not, not in the same way, but we, we tend to shred just because Slow, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. with all the stuff that we do around racing and the traveling and all this kind of thing, you don't actually get much time to, to train, to of really course. put on muscle and, and keep. So a lot of it's just maintenance, trying, yeah. to, trying to hold it as long as you can. We've got little periods, like three week breaks in between yep. during summer break where we try to get back. Yep. Um, by the final race, you're kind of yeah, you're yeah, gone. Yeah. And where you on. are. Exactly. And that's obviously your role. That's yeah, it. absolutely. So yeah. Like, we'll spend... January and February trying to put on two or three kilos of muscle mass yep. just to create a little bit of a buffer yep. um, and then like Alex said he'll probably have lost two two and a half kilos of that by August mm. and then we have three weeks we'll try and put another one on yeah, one yeah. and a half and then you're holding on to the end mm. of the season crazy so how long does your season go for 
So we started um, basically mid mid Feb, yep. and we'll finish. Yeah. Um, and you've already done mid- two. This is your third. This is our third. Yeah, yep. and then we'll finish early December. Yeah, wow. So it's quite long. Absolutely. It's 24. weird because you 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 get you call it racing fit, and then mm. there's like yeah, fit fit. You know, physical fit. Of course. So. But first yeah, it's race, like match fit, like anything. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So first race, we're actually, in terms of strength training and cardio training, we're mm. at our peak because it's it's kind of you spent all that winter to train, and then yeah. once you get to the the final race, that's all gone. Yeah. But neck strength, core strength, mm. and just general, even just the way that you can hold a race, and and even though you're fatigued during the end of the season, you're still fine during mm. race, two hours or whatever. One thing that intrigues me is like, you know, you've, it looks like a really cool life. It looks like, you know, amazing. It's flown everywhere. You get to see all these things, drive fast cars. It's amazing, right? But one thing that would really, really, and I, it consumes me, like even though I'm only flying from Melbourne to Sydney or Sydney to Brisbane or like the traveling alone, the lack of structure around my life when I have a training block mm. and then I've got actually life to do around it. Yeah. How do yeah. you deal with I mean, like, I can't imagine you doing the, the work and then the marathons afterwards. That seems yeah, insane. well, that, that's something. I mean, in order to get to where I am now, I kind of had to do that sacrifice, yeah, 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 right? Of course. Yeah. Go off three hours of sleep a night. That was what it was. Wow. Um, and yeah, so I'd have to work for eight hours, go and run 42K and do it all again. Oh. Um, but that's one thing I, I can, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. associate yeah. with is like, I don't, I don't know how it, you guys do it. Do you have a lot all, of downtime? It, not, not many, and, it, and it's all down to organization. Mm. Yeah. So I'm very lucky I have a team around. Of um, course. And honestly, Patrick's the most involved in that. Is, mm. We'll, we'll do jet lag. There's a lot of really good research about how to mitigate jet lag yep. as much as possible. Yep. And we'll do plans that are literally hour by hour. This Crazy. is what you do, this is what you do, this is what you And you can follow that perfectly, but it's still net, yeah. it, there's still an impact. Of course. Yeah. So when you add in that amount of time zones shift, yep. east and west, yep. it, it accumulates. And then it. like the stress, but also the pressure of performing, I can mm. imagine is something you... Weirdly... That's when you're at your easiest. Yeah, right. I would say. Yeah, that's the, that's yeah. You're that's in my it. normal. That's his happy that's, place. That's Completely agree. So, yeah. so I think it's like everything. Formula One, actually, when I when I when I went into Formula One. Yeah. The easiest thing was the performance side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the, what I've been. I've, yeah. I've done it. Because you yearn years for it. You just can't exactly. wait to get in the car. Exactly. And go exactly. Yeah. And, and the feeling of pressure is. It's, it's, it's what I'm, I'm used Makes to. Makes diamonds, baby. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there and you go. Is that what you feel when you're running? Is, is that is that your piece yeah. is when you're out? So r- I wouldn't say road. when I'm running, but when I have an event that I'm okay. When I'm finally in the event, I had a I did a podcast the other day where I was talking about um, the lead up to my run across Australia. I was so almost just like a um, little cage lion almost, just mm. like let me go, let me go, let me go. Yeah. As soon as I got to Cottesloe, which is in Perth, yeah, yeah, it was like I felt free mm. because I'm finally there. I'm in it. I, yeah. I don't have to do any more uh, talking. I don't have to do any more. It's like, you have to do what you said you're going to do. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. that for me is like the purest form of being alive. Yeah. And I'm yeah, sure yeah, you'd yeah. feel that yeah, in the car. Yeah, it's like, yeah. you're here, you're now, let's go, we're on. And was it always like, I will, you, you, you never thought you'd fail in it? Or Not was, was once. There, was there, okay, yes. there was no pressure to, to perform. There, there was the element of like, I had to get the, what I said, done, done. Yes. And yeah. that, that pressure was uh, something I really, thrived on yeah. but there was never like that oh, I'm never going to get it done in my mind it was always like you're going to get this done regardless of what happens out on the run yeah. we'll adapt when that happens yeah. Um, yeah. but at, at the end of the day I'm going to get to Bondi and I've seen you use a phrase which I've used quite a lot and I really enjoy it and I really like it which is get comfortable being uncomfortable yep. I yeah. love that phrase yeah. what does that mean for you well I think essentially like at its core we're so you know we have everything we could ever want in this yeah. world at the moment like it's or we, or we think we do yeah but, but yeah, yeah exactly right we we you know you get this instant dopamine hit from scrolling yeah. or you can go and order uber eats from a from your phone you can sit on your couch and get delivered to you literally to your yeah, head yeah yeah it's like we used to have to earn that yeah. thing right yeah so in order to grow you have to suffer in order to get anywhere you want to get you have to endure you have to sweat you have to bleed you have to feel those things and the longer you can delay that feeling of attaining the thing the more bliss your life will be. And so mm. the more uncom- discomfort you can chase, yeah. the greater feeling you have when you get it. And, and that, that we obviously talk about that a lot and, and you on your journey, which is the biggest learning comes from the hardest moments. Of course. Yeah. Um, and it's easy said, it's easier said than done. Isn't and, it? and that's mm. the key to it, right? It's the ability to be self-aware enough mm. and I guess to be open-minded enough to have people ask you difficult questions yep. or for you to look at yourself in the mirror and go, well, mm. 
where was I lacking in that performance? Yep. Because, yeah. and, and I would say of anybody I've ever worked with, you probably went so far on the other end of that, which was you were always the first person to look at yourself and probably too much at times. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But you've, you've learned through that process to yeah. step away from that a little yeah, yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah, no, it's very true. It feels like, um, I don't know, just time maturity, age yeah. maturity yep. helps a lot as well. Like going through them situations and also just that self-awareness mm. is important and then it's, it's dividing what's, yes, what, what, what's too much and, yeah, and yeah. what's, what's control, actually hurting control. yourself. Yeah, exactly. yeah what's, what's self-reflection and what is just beating, beating yourself yeah, yeah, up. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's such a simple thing of like, is this useful? Yeah, and, and that was it. it. And then it's like, okay, you know, there's a lot of like, I think every driver, maybe yourself as well, the, there's always areas and moments where you doubt yourself mm -hmm. and actually you use that to motivate yourself and, yep. and, and that's the energy you get to you know over winter or whatever you're just trying to improve and be better because sometimes it's not insecurity but it's just mm. that kind of feeling like I'm not doing enough or I need yeah. to do more yeah. that drives you forward and but it's that self-talk right it's how do yes. you deal with that self-talk? What do you tell yourself but also how do you answer yourself? I think yeah, yeah self-belief yeah. self-belief in that um that's one thing, you know, a lot of people, they want that self-belief. They go, how does someone go around being like, I'm, I see this, I, I want this and I'm going to do this. Like, yeah. I think a lot of people want that for themselves. But what it comes down to is, are you going to do those things when no one's watching? Are you going to do those yeah, things yeah. that only you can hold yourself accountable to, yeah. right? Like making your bed in the morning, uh, doing those things you said you're going to do time and time again without yeah. any accolades for achieving it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And in those times of actually you are on show, it's like, that's when that will show up. And that's the detail, right? And that's what we always come back to, which is do what you're doing right now and do it really well. Yeah. Everything else will look after itself. Of course. Yeah. If yeah, you yeah, just yeah. focus on If it's meant detail. to be, it will be. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very cool. Paul, oh. are you, by the way, are you listening to, to music when you're going for your own or? Right now? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I can hear you. <laughs> um, uh, Yes and no. Okay. So, uh, for my first 10 days of the run across Australia, I didn't listen to anything. Okay. Wow. Yeah, for until like the last wow. 10Ks. So for it's a lot of 10 hours, yeah, head noise, to yourself. bring it on. Yeah. It was like almost I used it as a reward for getting to a certain distance. Point. Because okay. if you rely on it the moment you wake up, you're going to get, yeah. you know, you, what else can you claw on to yeah, get through? Okay. You try and find these little wins in everything, like, yeah. yes. just to that little degree. Yeah. Um, my pump up song, it'd have to be an ACDC. I, anything, Hell's Bells, Shoot the Thrill, or black, Back in Black. Wow. There you go. You've asked the wrong person. Yeah. I mean, I, I really don't care. It's weird. <laughs> I don't listen to music before I drive or anything like that. So, I, w I would say you enjoy music, but you don't use it as a motivational yeah. tool. That's very true. That's yeah. very true. So, What's your favorite type of music? Um, all that, that, that depressing, sad stuff. Nice. <laughs> that gets Perfect. Me, that yeah. gets me going. I love it. That's really good. <laughs> um, What's yours, Patrick? I'm a bit like that as well. I don't, like I don't utilize music for motivation. I enjoy music. Mm. I've always had a really strong connection to music. Um, I don't want to be too stereotypical, but I like the Pogues a lot. A pair of brown eyes is a really good tune that I, what I, is? I tend to always flick back to. Shane McGowan. Yeah, I'm not I'm shipping it. up to Boston. Dude, also dude. a really good tune. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They're like an Irish band. Oh, Shane okay. McGowan. You know, uh, Fairy Tale New York. Maybe if I know, if I hear the song. Are they, are they an old band? How old are you? How He's old enough that he passed away last right. year, but... Yeah. So not that old. Hey, you're older than me. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I'm not How old sing. are you? I'm 25. No way. Yeah. Damn. You've yeah. accomplished a lot. I'm at I'm, a young age. <laughs> says the guy. No, but, <laughs> yeah, but it's weird because our, our lives are kind of generally... They're not... It's not that they're taken care of, but for the most part, we're kind of in this cycle where I feel like I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. I feel I'm 27, but I feel 15. I feel like I've mm. been I've been in in a in a circle, mm. this racing circle for so long, mm. and it's just strange because you know even like, I mean of course there's a lot of stuff we do behind the scenes, but but our our our, our lives are formed quite early, mm. and we kind of since seven years seven years old eight years old I've only done yeah, one yeah. thing. So in some ways you feel like, but you're like still being that kid that yeah, started. Yeah, and like and that. it, that's what, it's like. Yeah, we push ourselves to to what we do, mm. but it's it doesn't go beyond that. Yeah, but you you, you, you can assume that you're gonna make it to where you've made it. You're in the point zero zero one percent of that population. Mm. Yes, but it's it's strange how you know it's not like like yourself. 
wake up and, and go, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to run across gonna, this continent. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, There's yeah. No, it's kind of like you perform, you perform, you perform. Next year, you get an opportunity to drive for a different team. You perform, you perform. It's just this kind of... It's this, just different context. It is. It yeah. is very different. But um, maybe that was just random rambling. No, I liked it. No, it's it good. <laughs> my, uh, my, my, I'm very, very the polar opposite to that. Like I, yeah. I, didn't, I've, I only started running three years ago. Wow, okay. Yeah, so this Amazing. has been a, a desire to push myself to the absolute limit. And yes. I've had to create this life for myself. Yes. Because I was going to be a sparky. I was going to be just an electrician, go do the thing you yep. always do. And it was like, it just didn't feel enough for me. So I reckon I had this probably innate wow. yearning to want to go do, do more. Do. And it's like, when I felt I could do more, I was like, let's go for it. What was the trigger for that? Yeah. As in the more bit, right? So it's yeah. the having the feeling versus doing the action. I think what like- was a shift? the small like winning the small things and continuing okay. to win almost yeah. like achieving the small things again and again and again and they they became bigger so it yeah. all became relative and now yeah. doing what i've done is the largest thing i've ever done but when i do the next thing it'll be the yeah. next yeah. You know? okay that's a good one what's yeah. the next what's the next thing then? um i've got a big one in october really um, yeah announced, very very big uh, about to be announced very right. exciting yeah <laughs> nice right we'll leave it there okay. we didn't we didn't even Sorry. get to acknowledge the greatest mullet I've ever seen. <laughs> that is true. Um, Aussies love their mullets, eh? They do. I need to get one. You've I've got a haircut book kind of, tomorrow. I've kind of... I think I'm I should of, go I reckon lean into it. Get a mullet. Just, <laughs> I reckon I've like, got, like, I've got just a little yeah, over yeah, the yeah. ear mullet. Little don't, and then after the weekend, you can I was, tidy if, it if up. If you came here last year, I was blonde. I, I, my hair really? was that colour. Uh, we should have done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a mullet, mate. There's still time. Perfect. Well, I appreciate you, boys. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank, yeah you. thank you for and joining us. Good luck this really weekend. Good. Thank you. You're going to come to the race. I'll be there Saturday, good. Sunday. Good. Right, Running the track. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He's, he's actually going to do. He's going to do the race distance. <laughs> just, did, just running. You see him in Q1, just sprinting around. <laughs> awesome Soft tire on his shoulder. <laughs>